Pakistan's first genuine fast bowler, Imran Khan, is one of the most iconic leaders of all time. He's achieved international recognition and he's often called the main architect of Pakistani cricket. That's up in the air, he's getting under it. This could be victory, it is. Pakistan win the World Cup. A magnificent performance in front of 87,000 people. Imran Khan has went inside to victory. What a great victory. It's Imran Khan, his fifth World Cup, his fifth attempt to win the trophy. And he's finally done it. Let's take a look at some interesting facts about this superstar cricket player turned politician. How's it going guys? I'm Leroy Kenton. Thanks for joining me on another episode of FTD Facts. And this guy was by far the most requested person of all of last week. So many requests came in. I just put them up on the screen. If you're a fan of Imran Khan, hit that like button. Now right away, before we get into the facts, I want to know who are some of your favorite athletes? Imran Khan was born in Lahore, Pakistan on November 25th, 1952. He's the only son of his parents and he was educated at Aitchison College. He then went on to study at the Royal Grammar School, Worcester in England, where he learned to play cricket. After that, he was enrolled in Oxford in 1972, where he studied politics, philosophy, and economics. Now, many people don't actually know his full name. It's not just Imran Khan. His full name is actually Imran Ahmed Khan Niazi. Now I mentioned that his birthday was on November 25th and there's some confusion online about what his actual birthday is. So like if you take a look at Wikipedia, it says that his real birthday is on October 5th while his national identity card as well as websites like Famous Birthdays say his birthday is actually November 25th, not October 5th. In terms of his earlier days, Imran Khan was very adamant about being a cricket player at just the age of 9 years old. Then at the age of 16, he made a mediocre first class debut and after just playing a few games, he was selected to play for Pakistan while he was still at Oxford. From there, he had to wait another 3 years to play his second test match. In 1974, Khan picked up his first test wicket against England at Headingley, 3 years after making his debut and then again another two years. But despite all that waiting, his determination never stopped. And eventually that paid off for him after he started becoming a more regular player in the year 1976. Just before we continue with the facts, guys, I just want to let you know that this episode of FTD Facts is brought to you by Grammarly.com. If you don't know, Grammarly is one of the leading softwares in improving your English skills. There's hundreds of spelling and grammatical errors built in the software and it will automatically correct it for you. I have the link down below where you can install Grammarly for free and start using it and see all the benefits. And if you want even more features, you can purchase the upgrade. And the more you support our sponsors like Grammarly.com like you've been doing in the past, you continue to make these videos possible. So again, link is down below. Imran Khan has also left a huge legacy in the world of cricket. He was Pakistan's most successful cricket captain. He led his country to victory at the 1992 Cricket World Cup. A magnificent performance in front of 87,000 people. Imran Khan has went inside to victory. What a great victory. It's been a team effort. The entire squad, the physio, the doctors, they're all out on the field now. And they're loving every moment of this. Imran Khan, his fifth World Cup, his fifth attempt to win the trophy, and he's finally done it. Playing for the Pakistani cricket team from 1971 to 1992 and serving as its captain intermittently throughout 1982 to 1992. But the whole world of cricket was in tears after Imran Khan announced his retirement in 1987. The great hero Imran Khan, in his last match on his home patch Lahore has done what the crowd have been longing him to do. This was after the conclusion of the 1987 World Cup. Well what a farewell for Imran Khan. He says he'll retire after this series so this is effectively his last over on Lahore, the ground where he was brought up as a boy and bowled right through his career and he says farewell to Craig McDermott. However, Pakistan's president at the time, General Zia ul Haq, asked him to return and lead the team. Imran accepted the invitation and that was one of the best decisions of his entire life. When he led Pakistan to victory in the 1992 World Cup, the crazy thing about it is that he actually handpicked the team. He scored 185 runs from 8 matches at an average of just over 30 and he also picked 7 wickets. He then announced his retirement from the game 
after that win. Now, moving away from the world of cricket onto his political career, in April of 1996, Imran Khan, he founded the Pakistan Tariq e Insaf, meaning the Movement for Justice political party, and he became the chairman and he's still currently the chairman. He was elected in his native constituency, Mianwali, in the National Assembly from November 2002 to October of 2007. He was then elected during the May 11th, 2013 general elections. And at one point, actually, in the year 2002, he was very close to becoming prime minister. But although Imran Khan has achieved great things in cricket and politics, his life wasn't devoid of any controversies. Back in the year 1995, he had a wedding to a 21-year-old British journalist, Jemima Goldsmith, and that was super controversial. She was the daughter of late billionaire Sir James Goldsmith, and Jemima had even converted to Islam for the wedding. But while the British media was super obsessed with all the scandals surrounding Imran Khan's image and everything, in Pakistan, people, yeah, were expecting some sort of political fallout from this relationship. So it's no surprise that their marriage ended in the year 2004, reportedly due to their differences in political views as well as Imran Khan's involvement in politics. Maimara, happy day for you. But that wasn't just the only controversy in his life. In the year 1994, he admitted to ball tampering in test cricket and scratching the ball with a bottle top once in a county match, and that was back in the year 1981. Later in the year 1996, two former England cricketers, Botham and Alan Lamb, sued him for libel after he allegedly called them racist during arguments over ball tampering. Luckily for Imran, he ended up winning the case. Basically, I'm... Please lower the microphone, please. Uh, Overjoyed. I thank the Almighty that whatever I've been saying for two years, I've been vindicated there, that I never called anyone a racist, an underclass, or a cheat. And that has come true. And that uh, I'm sad that this, I, this had to come to this court. And then in 1997, a Los Angeles court ruled that Imran was the legal father of a four year old Californian girl named Tyrion White. She was born as a love child out of an affair that Imran Khan had with her mother, Sita White, who had later died in 2004 due to a heart attack. Yes, I'm uh, just very happy today that this judgment was entered and it's an important day for my child and I think that Mr. Khan uh, should make an apology to the people in Pakistan for running his campaign in a lie. I think it's time for him to take responsibility for his child and um, I'm just extremely happy. And then he was super popular in British gossip columns for having relations with journalist Susanna Constantine as well as Lady Liza Campbell and the artist Emma Sargent. Uh, you know, you were regarded as something of a playboy, as I recall, among the Pakistani team. We evolve, we human beings. We are humans, otherwise we'd be made angels. So we make mistakes, we learn, we evolve. But with controversies aside, that never stopped Imran from having a very successful career. As a bowler, Imran had genuine pace and could move the old and new ball in the air. That's got to be close. He didn't offer a shot and Barnes is out. Very highly talented very skilled with the ball and also very able with the bat, so a great all-rounder, one of the best. He was selected as Asia's Person of the Year in 2012, and he won the title with 88% of the votes. He's also in Oxford University's Hall of Fame, and he received the Best Cricketer Award from Indian Cricket, as well as other different minor societies. And besides being a cricket player as well as a politician, Imran Khan is also an author. He's authored several books, and those include his autobiography, Imran, the autobiography of Imran Khan, Imran Khan's Cricket Skills, Indus Journey, A Personal View of Pakistan, All Round View, as well as the book Warrior Race, A Journey Through the Land of the Tribal Pathans. He had a presence that managed to make Pakistan into world beaters and that can, that is the greatest thing that he ever achieved was unity in the team that he captained. I want a change in Pakistan. We wanted to get rid of the system which is stopping the potential of the country going up. That concludes this episode on the legendary Imran Khan. And before I get out of here, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Grammarly.com. The link is down below where you can install the software for free. You can start improving your English skills right away. And if you're loving what you get out of Grammarly, you can purchase the upgrade. 
Hey, and also we got more videos for you. If you wanna check out some of the other people that we've covered here on FTD Facts, we have a playlist for you right here. Or if you just wanna learn about our world in general, we have videos for that as well. Thanks guys, you've been awesome and I'll see you in another episode.